I'll be recording that and uh, we have a YouTube channel that uh, people can watch offline or after the meeting. So, um, let me share one second. Okay, so you, you should be seeing my first slide, which says Sipatas Meetup number 17. And um, I'm going to try to see if I can uh, flip between the slides and the in uh, Microsoft Teams so I can see people. So can you see that? Just uh, just confirm in just is this one of you would confirm that you see yeah, it. Yeah, we can see it. Yeah, we can. OK. OK, I, I'll, I'll start. People would trickle in anyway. And uh, so welcome for the 17th uh, meetup. Thank you for joining, spending this afternoon with me. Uh, hopefully you learn new things and you'll have fun. Uh, I'll start by just asking, I see 27 people uh, joining. Uh, can you raise your hand if you're, it's the first time for you? Can you please raise just to use this feature? Okay. Let's see a few people. Okay. So uh, first of all, welcome. Um, I'm glad that you, uh, you joined. And uh, just to give you some few uh, uh, background of uh, what I'm doing and, and how I ended up uh, with uh, with this uh, meetup and and the goals and so on and so forth. Uh, let me just go back. Uh, so 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 I'm I'm basically hosting that since uh, I think around February 2019. Uh, the the group was was somehow around 70 people and uh, there was no activity and I took over because I didn't want the the uh, the group to be just vanished. There was a there was two options here. Either we we don't take ownership on the group or or uh, or we do if we don't take ownership. It would be gone and I didn't want uh, San Diego uh, city to, to be left without a, a C++ plus meetup. I took over and, and it's been fun for the past uh, year and a half. Um, and uh, we, the idea is to basically discuss a lot of uh, uh, C++ material and, and there is a, a balance that I try to strike between beginners all the way to uh, experts. Uh, trying to focus maybe on intermediate plus minus, but uh, uh, it's, it's, I'm trying to kind of bring multiple topics that everyone would be feel comfortable. Uh, a lot of people, they 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 join to learn and I and I I'm aware of that and I'm I am trying to kind of uh, balance the the point that I'm actually trying to bring up every time is that I need feedback from you if you want a specific topic or a specific domain. Uh, the it would be uh, easier for you to participate and, and, and enjoy if if you come with with uh, topics that you feel like you want to discuss and we can find people that uh, create talk and, and, and bring the talk. And if you want to participate in, in this meetup, uh, please just ping me either through meetup or we have our Slack or, or even uh, through Twitter, I'll, I'll show all this information. And um, uh, please do, uh, if you if you, if you you want to do something and you just don't have a topic, I can help. There's a, a, a significant amount of topics out there that we can cherry pick and, and, uh, and just have a few slides. It, it can be from a lightning talk, which would be 
five minutes to I don't know, an hour or more. It's up. It's really up to you. There is no lower limit or upper limit. There is nothing like this. So I welcome anything that you like to have. And uh, we usually have agenda that is I, I have like two parts. One is kind of uh, miscellaneous uh, things like the GitHub repo of the month and lightning talk and things like that, which pretty much kind of a smaller uh, items. And then we have kind of the main course, which today would be C++17, the standard parallel algorithms that were being, being added to C++17. And it's, it was a very interesting uh, journey for me to learn and uh, kind of get my hands dirty with uh, the parallel algorithms. So I learned a lot of things and also a lot of things left as, as unresolved and I'll, I'll explain why. Um, but I, I, I think that it would have a lot of uh, interesting points that uh, not only in the parallel algorithms uh, point of view, but other other things like just 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 algorithms in, in general that uh, you might find uh, useful and interesting. Um, the, the meetup fees, we have fees for that. Uh, it's about 150, I think, per year, if I'm not mistaken give or take, uh, sponsored by Qualcomm Wireless R&D Software, which uh, I'm working part of this uh, uh, excellent group. And um, thank you, Qualcomm, for sponsoring that and providing the platform for me to uh, uh, get that uh, uh, meetup uh, up and running. Uh, we have a Dropbox link uh, where I upload, <laughs> it takes me, but a couple of weeks to kind of, oh yeah, I need to upload all the, the material that I had past uh, meetup. So I upload everything. So all the history is, is, is in Dropbox. So feel free to browse. And uh, we have a Slack channel. Oh, by the way, all these links, they are pasted into the meetup uh, uh, websites. So, so you, can, you can take a look there. So, don't need to memorize anything. Our Slack channel is SDCPP Meetup. We have a YouTube channel where I upload my recent sessions, recorded sessions. Uh, I have a Twitter account. Uh, and I also, if you want to follow me on Twitter, it would be Kobe underscore CA. And uh, I tweet mostly about C++, uh, C, uh, Functional programming, object oriented, also Rust, which I'm looking at uh, recently, uh, Python, and just general software engineering, like all kinds of uh, topics that I find interesting. Oh yeah, of course, Unix, Linux, all that domain is is something that is really close to me, and uh, and I tweet about that as well. So uh, feel free to follow me, and if I, the, the the interesting part that uh, I realized a few years ago is that a lot of people from the community, uh, professional community, professional people from the community, they they actually in, on Twitter. So they would post uh, from Reddit articles to uh, to any any blogs and, and things like that. The, it seems like this is the place to be if you want to absorb a lot of uh, information in various. There's a lot of things. Uh, to kind of absorb, and um, if you follow me, I'll, uh, I'm trying to kind of filter the, the most interesting thing, at least in my opinion. Um, and, and SDCPP Meetup is another is another handle that you can follow. Okay, so before we go and start the the actual main, uh, at least the first. Uh, part of the of the uh, presentation. I just want to stop for a second and just to see we are 40 people. Just to want to hear if you have any questions to me before I continue. Uh, anything uh, that's that's the time and I I I want that to be interactive. So and I'll I'll try every few slides to kind of stop and and see if anyone has anything in the conversation window. Um, so. Uh, is there anything that that someone would like to bring up in terms of questions and things like that? 
and you you'll have you'll have more opportunities of course so i, I it doesn't seem like anyone has a question it's just fine let me get back So, we present. So the next slide, uh, which if you if you joining my uh, my hosting of the, of this C plus plus meetup, every month I'm bringing a new GitHub repository, and this will be our uh, GitHub repository of the month. And this is about accessing non-public members. So, uh, if you if you're working as part of uh, a C plus project, can be a, some commercial project or maybe a hobby you know, or anything that you can think of. Uh, first of all, you, you you see my slide, right? Just some someone just say just uh, confirm so I I know that. You yeah, see. we can see the slide. Yep. So. Um, so often when we when we build unit tests, and hopefully you do build unit tests, we can talk about unit tests maybe sometime in in one of the talks. It's, it's important domain. Um, so when when you when you build your unit test, sometimes you want to poke around at some non-public member, and by saying member, obviously it's part of a class, and class has access specifier, they are public uh, members, they are protected members, and they are uh, the public, protected, and private. So as a client of this class, you cannot access the non-public one, just as a client. So if you hold a, a pointer reference or just an instance of this class, you can access the public members. And I say members, it can be the uh, data members, hopefully you don't have public data members. And again, we can, if you have a question why and all this, I'll, I'll, I can explain. And uh, so so data members and function members, member, well, member functions, basically what some some people call it uh, methods. Uh, so, so, but sometimes I do want to poke around and see in, in during the test is, is a specific state of the class is in a, in a, is the class is the class instance in a specific state that I expecting or it, or maybe it's not. Um, so there are, there are multiple options to solve that. One option is I'm going to expose interface so the unit test would be able to uh, actually access the the non-public access access the guts of this of the of the of the class basically leak this information outside. Uh, not a good idea because you don't want to jeopardize and, and kind of uh, uh, leak this uh, information, uh, like compromise this this whole design by by uh, exposing this outside of the of the class through the public uh, 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 section. Uh, some people don't do this. I hope uh, I hope I'm not giving you ideas. Some people would do pound define private to nothing or private to public. Don't, don't do this. It's just kind of exploiting the the uh, uh, preprocessor ability to kind of remove the word public uh, uh, protected or, or private outside. So so don't do this. And, it, and it's like not really bulletproof. There are some issues with that. Uh, there are all kinds of compiler options that I've seen like long time ago that you can pass and then uh, non-public be become uh, exposed. So all of these are uh, kind of options for you like in the toolbox, but none of them actually is really clean. There is one that is more tidy than the others compared to the others. And this is what I'm bringing in here today as the GitHub repo of the month. And uh, there are a few repo repositories. Uh, the one that I'm using, okay, let me a second. So hopefully you see my laser. So that two, two repositories, one is CPP member accessor, which I have experience with 
but there are others out there that you can use and I have another another reference and there there is it's basically based and and it's it's part of the the readme of this of this uh, repository it's based on some few articles and blogs one of them was go of the week of uh herb Sider and and others uh so so it's it's based on 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 specific technique and uh i have this technique here so let me let me see if i can load it one second and i think i i would need to uh, share my entire desktop one second So I'm sharing my entire desktop, and and this is the technique. Now, when I was, it, it's this is would be towards the more experience uh, portion of of this of this meetup, uh, but I wanna I wanna see if people would like me to explain how this is achieved. So raise your hand if you want that. It's it is experience. It, I'm not expecting people to be like completely. It took me time. So let's see if people want that. So we'll see. If there is enough uh, raised hands, well, I'll do that. Not enough raised hands. OK. So uh, let me see, it uh, continues. There are seven. OK, so it's not it's not also I'm not going to go in details, but there is a link here. Uh, where is it? There is a link here to Godbolt. And Cobalt is basically a compiler explorer. On it's an online compiler explorer where you can basically uh, uh, write your your code and pick your compiler, your your options, and the the whole trick is basically being able to. And this is this is a function, a non non public uh, a member function that can be accessed here. Uh, the whole point is being able to uh, reach to this function as a function pointer. There is, there is in the language, there is a kind of a blind spot or a place in in the rules where you can, even though you don't, you, you have a, a specific non-public member, whatever it's a data or, or, or a function, you can still access. Uh, uh, get a get a pointer to uh, to to the to the element uh, like the uh, function pointer would be one one example and then if you have an instance you can actually uh, invoke the function pointer through this instance through a specific mechanism so there is there is this hole that people used and going back to uh, wait a minute, let's, uh, second. So going back to the GitHub repo of the month, uh, it's it's really straightforward when you say, okay, I want to access this member of this class type or or struct. Usually struct is all public, but you can still have public, private stuff in struct, uh, and 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 that's it. And you have you have access and you can poke around. Very very useful. I definitely encourage you to uh, check it out. OK, questions? Not really a question, but um, I just wanted to point out that we're now seeing the presenter view, we're not seeing the actual slide or we're seeing the slides. It's just we're seeing the presenter. View. Uh, because I because I have the, the entire uh, desktop, but that's fine. Thank you for letting me know. Sure. Not, it's not a big deal. Like you most case you see my notes, which there is no it's it's all pure good language, no cursing or anything like this. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I'll tell you, I'll tell you a story. I, I usually prepare these slides ahead of time because I don't want to uh, uh, get to the point where it's like it's just before the meetup and I don't have the slide because it takes a few good hours to prepare it. And, and obviously it's it's it takes part of my weekends. Uh, so I prepared them maybe three weeks before the meetup. So I, I need to put some notes. I kind of learned that if I know if I don't put the notes after three weeks, I don't even remember what's happening. Right. Like it's like I can I tend to just I don't know if it's an age or <laughs> but I 
I tend to forget. There is yeah. so much. I have a very limited uh, memory. I think that's everyone. Everyone? Okay. You, oh. you, you, you made my day. <laughs> who's, day? Who's, who's speaking? Uh, my name is Mohammed. I'm. Uh... Thank you, Mohammed. You made my day. <laughs> Your thing, man. I got you. Okay. Uh, and I t I'll tell you for sure that it's. Uh, it's not easy for me to make it online. I like the face-to-face -face interaction, which we had one year before the this horrible thing that we had, yeah, this whole COVID thing. And because I really like to sit with everyone, hopefully we'll, we'll have that one day and see your faces. And and it, it gives me feedback about, about what, like, where are things going. So uh, I hope one day it will be uh, we will get back to this, this normal face-to-face -face meetup. Okay, so um, one of the things, and this is this is uh, the next thing that I would like to show. It's a lightning talk by Walter E. Brown. It's a very big name in the C++ community. Uh, you can read about him uh, Wikipedia, I bet, and, and other. This is this is from CppCon 2017. CppCon is is an annual conference. Uh, used to be in Seattle. Now it went back to uh, not back, but we just it's moved to a, a bigger location in uh, in Denver, next to Denver, basically, uh, Colorado. And um, unfortunately, it's it's gonna be online this time. Like everything on Earth is everything is online. Unfortunately, that's it, it's a big bummer. Uh, this is from 2017, and it, it talks about uh, the spaceship operator. And it's comparable operator in the, the spaceship. I think the, I think the person who coined this term was Herb Sutter, and it looks like a spaceship. This is why. And the idea is, before we go and delve into this five minutes or seven minutes uh, uh, lightning talk, the idea is that if you have, and I'll probably have uh, like maybe half an hour talk about that. Uh, if you have a class or a struct, you have a user-defined type. Okay, let me back off a, a bit. So let's say you have an integer, uh, less than, equal, equal, all, and greater than, and all of these comparable operators are defined for, for these types, right? If you have integer, unsigned, flow, double, all of this stuff, it, it's built in, right? Everyone agree here, hopefully. OK, so but what happens if you have a your user defined type and you want to have such semantic in your code? It's like you want to have a less than, equal, equal, and, and so on and so forth. You basically need to have this. I, I, let's say this struct has one, two, three members, let's say integers and floats and whatnot. So if you try to have two in, instances of this class type, and compare between these instances, it's not going to compile. Like the compiler doesn't know like, what does it mean instance of foo one is less than instance of foo two. And let's say foo are class or struct with, with integers. So we need to provide a mechanism for the compiler to be able to compare this, whatever the comparison is. So there's functions you, you have functions, operators that you write. And it's it's if you start, if you want to have a complete one, it's a boilerplate because there's so many things without going into deep, there's so many things that you need to write and to think about. Uh, so it, it it tends to be very, very big uh, kind of a boilerplate code that you that you definitely don't want to write. So in a lot of cases, you can just have this new C++, C++ 20 operator where you say, okay, here's the operator. And you know what? The default operator of this spaceship operator would be sufficient. And what does it mean it, it, it would be sufficient? Uh, we, can, we can explain, but, but the idea is that this, the, the compiler is now understanding another syntax. This is a compiler help. It's not a library, but it's a compiler feature that been added and and helps a lot. And now you can actually put this this type and plug it into all kinds of algorithms. Things about 
trees, they need a comparable uh, function. And if you ever had a, uh, a binary tree like StudMap and similar uh, to, to user defined types, you probably know that you needed to go and have this, this uh, comparable function, mostly, let's say less than. Uh, this, this new feature would help you uh, to kind of automate that in some sense. There are some, some use cases that you need to do some more work, but, but it can definitely can help you. Okay, so let me know if you don't hear me, if you don't hear the, the sound. I, I think I shared my uh, slides with audio of the system. And I'll need to go back uh, and share my screen one second, okay? So I'm going to share. I'm going to share this one. OK. You should be able to hear the, the, the audio. Thank you very much. Before I actually get started, I need to ask you for a small favor, everybody. Um, I'm an old man, as you know. We're all, we, my wife and I have been married almost 50 years, uh, 40 years, sorry, 40 years. Um, <laughs> And yeah, our, our kids would be surprised. Um, but my wife actually fabricated all the ties I'm wearing this week. And I'd appreciate it if you would help me thank her for these ties. No, 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 no. How about we start at the beginning? Much better. Yes, yes, yes. OK. So this is going to be like a movie trailer, right? Coming soon to a compiler near you, yes. The, the, the Standards Committee, WG21, of which I'm an emeritus member, for us, C17 is actually old hat. We've started working on C20. And I'm here to share with you tonight a, a tiny taste of some things that are in the pipeline that we're rather optimistic about. And it starts with this observation from roughly 20 years ago by Dave Abrahams, that may be a name you recognize, the Abrahams Exception Safety Guarantees, for example. If you ever write less than, you probably also want the other operators as well. And the status quo, you know, since forever, has been typically, I mean, it's formulaic, um, you write one operator and you implement the other five in terms of it, for example, this or this. Alternatively, some people prefer to write two operators by hand and then implement the other four in terms of those two, like that or like that, okay? Uh, kind of boring. We'd like to automate this, and we've wanted this for well over 20 years now. This has been an ongoing problem for a long, long time. This is specifically what we would like. Compiler assistance so that we only have to write one operator and the rest just works. Period, done. Uh, we would like something more. It would really be great if we could somehow specify what comparison means for our type because there are types that should only be equality comparable. You can't order them, like a, like a random number distribution. You can't arrange them in any sequence. You can compare them for equality or not, but that's, that's it. But there are other kinds of orderings as well. And of course, we want backwards compatibility. You know, current code should continue to work just fine. So we want this to be opt-in. It turns out that as I said, we've been working on this for a very long time. The oldest paper that I could find dates from 1995. And I suspect there are some older ones than that that I, I haven't been able to unearth yet. And we've had several library attempts, the notable, the notable ones being the standard RELOPS. And we've had boost.operators, which was one of the first uh, packages in boost, dating back to, I think, 1999, maybe 1998, I'm not sure that they've proven both awkward and inadequate. They don't fill all the, re all the requirements I set forth. 
And it happens that in the last three or four years, there's been a resurgence of interest. We've had like a dozen papers exploring this from various angles. I wrote one, Bjarne wrote some, et cetera, et cetera. Okay? So what's recently happened is all of this suddenly gelled, and it's culminated in a recent proposal that the committee has already reviewed for a new operator. This is not something we do lightly. We're adding a new operator to the language, officially called the three-way comparison operator. Unofficially, of course, it's the spaceship operator, which explains my title slide. Uh, here are a few details. We've picked the precedence for it. We've picked the associativity. Um, there will be a new header in the library because it comes with library support. Here are some of the highlights of how we envision it to be used. You define this operator for your type. That's how you opt in. For example, this is kind of the minimum that you have to write, assuming the defaults are acceptable for your type, as we believe they often will be. It's a one-liner. What this does is member-wise compare. And how does it compare net corresponding members? Well, however, those members have defined their own comparison operators. Okay? And when it's all is said and done, you get a three-way result. So what happens when client code says A less than B, or A greater than B, or A, you know, fill in the blank? Well, if the type has the corresponding operator, the compiler will arrange to use it. If it doesn't, and you've provided a spaceship operator, then the compiler arranges to use that and pretends that you wrote a call to the spaceship operator and asks if the result has the right relationship against zero. Right? So, I mean, we're used to this because we have this in the standard library with Strcomp, right? So we know how to do this. Here are some options. That, the, that we programmers will have in case the defaults aren't right for us. You can provide your own definition, of course. You don't have to define it as equal default. Uh, when might you want to do that? Well, if not all the members are supposed to participate in the comparison, or if the order of your members isn't quite the order in which you need them compared, you have to provide your own, but you write only one function, and it's going to be used. You also get to specify your types ordering properties as the return type of this operator. And there is a, a library, a set of library types. You pick one, and that defines what the appropriate operations are for your type. You can choose to have this as a member function, as I've shown, or you can have it as a non-member function by design, your choice. And you can actually overload this, for example, if you want cross-type comparisons. So there's where you go for more information. I've said there have been like a dozen or you know, 15 or 20 papers in the last three or four years. This is one of the seminal ones. It doesn't have any part of the proposal in it, but it sets forth some key insights that we've based our design on. This is the paper that has the design in it. It also has examples. It has a nice bibliography of the recent papers. Uh, it also has the proposed formal wording. There will be a revision of this paper in the next mailing, which will come out uh, either late October or early November this year, 2017. And there's a companion paper, which is mine, that provides the library wording, proposed library wording, um, for C++ 20. Uh, we have not officially decided what the new header name will be, we're proposing CMP. That's the one part that hasn't yet been blessed by the committee. We hope that can be done quickly. I don't want to have to type out comparison as the name of the header, but the committee will do what the committee will do. Uh, the proposal, as I say, is still on its way through WG21. We're optimistic. The design has been approved already. Uh, we now have to ha review carefully the wording uh, there's not a whole lot of wording, but it's not trivial either. So there is some work yet to be done, but all the words are in these papers. 
Uh, mine is still forthcoming. It'll be out in the same mailing as the revision of the initial proposal paper. We do not yet have any implementation experience because it seems like the vendors are waiting for at least the initial wording review you know, before they go and start implementing things to try out. Um, but if you're one of those people who likes to hack on GCC maybe or Clang, please come see me. And uh, you know, I want to talk to you because we would love to have an implementation of this stuff to play with. And with that, I thank you all very much. So as I mentioned, this is already in. And uh, you can use it with a conforming uh, C++ uh, operator, uh, C++ uh, compiler. OK, uh, any questions or anything? OK. So one of the things that I start having in the past six months, maybe, is, um, is this uh, algorithm intuition. Uh, better algorithm intuition. That's something that kind of inspired from uh, Conor Hokestra, uh, and you can you can definitely follow him on Twitter, and he has a blog and, and YouTube channel, and uh, uh, he he basically presented a series of talks about how to take a problem and map it into a, a functional programming algorithm. He is very big in, on functional programming, and often you'll see him compare a uh, 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 specific problem and the solution, compare the solution syntax into multiple uh, languages like uh, C, Haskell, sometimes Rust, uh, Python, and it's really interesting to see how every language solves that. So um, I am kind of trying to continue this and picking every once in a while, picking some uh, some uh, problem and trying to solve it. And I'm this today I'm bringing something uh, so you can uh, also uh, take a look at. So there is this uh, problem that uh, on lead code named uh, to sum. Consider to be easy, and uh, there are. Uh, so here's the thing: you have a vector of of numbers, um, and and you get a target. Let's say nine. There is a, only one solution, so this is guaranteed. You have you have a solution, and it's only a single one. To uh, and you may not use the same element twice, and the solution would be the sum of these two values would be equal to the target. So in this case, in this example, you uh, uh, you have uh, two, seven, eleven, fifteen, and zero and one, which would be two and seven. You need the indices, so two and seven would be zero and one in the index in, uh, would be uh, summed together to nine. And there are multiple ways to solve it. Uh, there is a single pass. There is a, a, a multiple pass. Multiple. Like, more than a single one, and um, and I'm going. So the the link here, I'm not going to show both of them. There is a double pass and a single pass solution. I I I wrote both of them. Both of them basically were accepted. This the single pass is faster. Uh, both of them were accepted into uh, lead code, and uh, I would like to show you the solution. And the idea is. A few like few reasons why I'm bringing that. One, I I want people to get used to writing uh, uh, and using st standard algorithms, stood algorithms, uh, and there are multiple of them. And if you don't, if you're not familiar in CPP reference, you can pick at the standard algorithms. There are multiple of them. It is, in my opinion, in other opinion, it, it is a key in order to be a, a, a kind of a, a take take your 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 skills into the next level in C plus plus by using uh, more like a better syntax and and often you'll you'll even gain better uh, performance. 
because it, it might hitting a, a, a specific algorithm that's already been thought out uh, and, and there is an implementation that might be better than yours. Of course, you always need to measure, but uh, keep in mind that this is always an option, that there is an algorithm out there and just kind of echoing Sean Parent's uh, uh, one, one of his talks uh, about algorithms in C++, he said that if you don't find something that is suitable, write such algorithm and contribute that to your company, uh, like there's a common, a common library so everyone can use it. And there, there are enough, enough examples out there, uh, at least I, I kind of bumping into these examples on an almost daily basis that there is no algorithm that would do what I want, but I can write one. Okay, so in this example, I have three, two, four. Hopefully you see, I, I hope the, the fonts are not small for you to kind of see stuff. Uh, let me know, I can, I can, I can actually let me see if it's better. Okay, hopefully this is better. So, um, so I have this vector inside main. So a few things, I'm gonna kind of make all kinds of kind of comments about the, 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 the syntax. Int main, you need to have main returning int, not void. Void is undefined behavior in C++. At least in C++, I don't remember what C. Might be also in C, I can remember. And this is a syntax that I'm using. Uh, I think this can even be const, if I'm not mistaken, because I'm not changing. Yeah, so I can even have this const. It should still work. So I have a, a vector, and this is one of the syntax to create a vector. It's it's a C++ 11 syntax where you have the type on the right side hand of the equal. And uh, this is this is all standard C++. It's just it's, there is no dynamic uh, typing or anything like this. It's this auto means just infer that from the right si right hand side of the uh, equal sign, which is stood vector. And I'm I have three elements, three to four. And there is a new syntax in C++11 that allows me to have like an initializer list. In this case, uh, three elements in inside. And uh, if you have, by the way, if you have any question, I'll I'll pick. Uh, from time to time on the chat and see if anyone is asking something. Uh, and I would like to, I'm passing this input to this function with the target. The target is six, so obviously six means two and four, which is index one and two. Okay, so the solution uh, is basically uh, a vector uh, sorry, the return value is a vector of, in this case, two elements. You can see here, and uh, and these two elements would be the indices. Since since I I know that there is a solution and there's a single solution, I don't. I'm kind of omitting omitting here any uh, uh, error checking. I know that I have something, so I have just an assert here. So I don't, I could return other things, not std vector. I could have an option out of std vector, but, but right now I just have an, a, a vector of two, of two elements. So if you think about, if you think a moment about how you're going to solve that, and please take a look at that later uh, for deeper inspection, uh, you can basically traverse the, and I want you to kind of focus on this line line 27. I use to find if, which is a kind of a common way to say, okay, I'm going to traverse a specific container. In this case, it's a vector. And I'm using cbegin, so it's a const iterator, because I'm not going to change anything in the container. I just want to look at it. I just want to read only visibility or view for this container. So C begin and C end would be something that allows me to achieve this concept. And, and if you look at my code, I'm trying to uh, have as much as possible concept. Like I think this one can be const as well. 
I'm, I'm uh, sorry. I, I actually have a quick question, if you don't mind. Uh, sure. Uh, you said the C begin and C end. They're basically uh, it's just a const iterator. Um, is there a difference between like doing nums dot begin, nums dot end with with what I see here? So that's a good question. I don't remember <laughs> one one talk that I had on algorithm and people didn't ask it. So it's a very common question, and thank you for asking that. Uh, it's basically the same. The reason, so if you look at C begin, there is there is some template tricks that knows that if if the parameter to this function has a function that begin, it would call this fun function that begin. The reason people sometimes there's, there's a camp that says use use the non-member one is because C begin would also work for nums that are C style arrays. Well, if I have a C style array, I, I don't have a dot begin or dot C begin or dot C end or dot end to a C style array. But if I just have a C begin as a non-member function of some nums and these nums, so, so the, in other words, I could actually have this as non-vector, but a C array and change change it over here and so on and so forth and this this line would would stay the same does it make sense hmm. i'll have to look more into it okay yeah google for that uh there might be other reasons to use cbegin over dot cbegin and vice versa but it just this this specific thing just stuck in my head long long time ago years and years ago and and but but I'll, to be honest i sometimes i uh i already writing nums and i kind of getting lazy to go back and do c begin of nums so i already announced so i'll i'll click that and i'm using c lion in my day-to-day -day job uh which is an ide and it would give me the C begin, so I kind of, oh, I'm kind of lazy. And okay, if someone ever wants CRA, it's not going to compile, and and he or she would need to go and do C begin of nums instead of nums dot C begin. So, okay. so it, it depends if 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 I'm writing and I I kind of throughout the flow I I start with the begin or C begin, so I put the, the container as a as a parameter if I. Already writing, I'll do nums that C begin, and it's 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 not an error. And in terms of performance, it's exactly the same. C begin is an inline function; it's a one or two lines that just call nums that C begin. Hmm. So it's really just um, um, really similar, I guess. It's identical. Just uh, it's more flexible, I guess. It's more flexible. Yeah. That's again th this this one thing just stuck into my head many many years ago and i just that's i'm just using it so but it, but it, it, it's it's fine either way it's not it's not an error okay any any other questions okay so just take a look at this 27 line and what we do here is we traverse and if we find something so the find is there is a predicate. The predicate would return true or false. If I, if it returns true, I'm stopping. So I'm traversing until I stop in a specific location. Then I have it an, an iterator. And if I if I found an, anything, it would never be equal to end. So the the um, the convention back then, I have some reservation. Like why it's not changing today with the fact that we have stood optional, but let's let's leave it aside. The convention is if you if you didn't find anything and so on, so forth, like the and nothing of 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 an iterator would be uh, pointing to the, the the end of the of the of the container, and the end of the container is always the element and quote quote element uh, after the last element, so past the last element, and. One of the things we're already talking about it. One of the things that you need to remember is that you can use it and compare it to other things, but you cannot dereference it. The referencing end some a, a pointer, a, an iterator. Sorry, not a pointer, an iterator. 
can be a pointer, but the referencing an iterator that points to end of the container, uh, the reference is that star iter is is undefined behavior. Okay, so you can compare it to C end or end, but you cannot deref it. Okay, that's something that you need to just, just make it just make sure it's stuck in your head. So, so the the only thing so once I have this, the only thing that is left for me and this index indices comes from here. The only thing that comes from that left for me would be creating this lambda that would it's a predicate that returns true or false and this lambda what would happen is this lambda would be given an item one by one as defined if traversing this container which is a vector and if you can try to imagine if you need to write this find if it's going to be just a, a a full loop maybe something like this it's a loop that would take an element, pass it to the predicate, take a look at the return value from the predicate and see if if it's true, I'm done. I can break from the loop. If it's not, I'll continue until I'm done with the container and then I'll return uh, end to the iterator to, to signal the caller that we are done with it. So, so the idea is, is, is relatively simple. You traverse, you take the target, and you minus the item, the current item, and you keep an unordered map, like a hash map, to keep a record of what you already uh, 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 visit in terms of target minus item. Now, if you didn't, if you didn't visit, if you sorry, if you don't have it in the in the hash map yet, you you put it in and you say I'm I'm not done yet. But so this would be this code, and then the next element would be given to this predicate and so on and so forth. But if you are, if you find something, so you have a target minus item and you find the corresponding one in the in the hash, in the uh, unordered map, this, this hash table, then you're done basically, because you, uh, and we keep the, we keep the indices at the second, at the second uh, pair it's a pair, right? So the second item, second second item of the of this uh, of this every record. So basically, we are done, and this is what we are going to keep. This will be index one and index two, and uh, this will be our solution. The the things that I want, and this is kind of be more into the intermediate and and up. So if you if it's the first time you're looking at the lambda. It's kind of interesting to see if any if people actually it's first time for them looking at a lambda, but a lambda it's basically a it's a it's a uh, it's a, a predicate or, or anonymous uh, uh, functor or there's multiple names for that, but it's basically a callable object that uh, would have a body. So it's it's think about it like a function. It has a body, and it has a a, a parameter. In this, it, it might have parameters. This, in this case, it's single parameter. And the other thing is, there there might be a state initialized into this lambda. And I had I had talks before. We actually had a talk in the beginning of our uh, uh, the, the new incarnation of the of this meetup, where I talked about I had a, a one hour session about one hour session on lambda, and I can actually redo it. Maybe it's a good idea just to get the refresher because it is an important part of the C++ 11 or the modern, the modern C++. Uh, in a nutshell, I initialize I to zero. It's a state. I'm creating an unordered map. This is a C++ 14 uh, syntax. I'm capturing the target, so I have a visit. I have I have a way to access it here, and I'm uh, taking these indices. Which are outside of the lambda are taken by reference, so I can later on uh, refer to them because we are actually uh, assigning values to these references, uh, and then we I have access to to this uh, uh, both of them. So this is the solution. Um, if you have any question, actually you can have you can you can we can we have time for question right now if you have any. If not. Please feel free to kind of go back and kind of convince yourself that you understand that. If not, I'm here 
through Twitter or Slack or anything that you can have in your possession to contact me, just let me know. Um, okay. So we are done with this one. And this is just a, I just have a capture of, uh, of the results of so this is this is solving uh, with the single uh, single pass. Even even the, the double pass was not that uh, heavy in terms of performance, by the way. The stack overflow of the mantis is simple. How to print a vector in reverse order? So it's pretty simple. So people have a lot of this for loop and all, and one person said, hey, what you need, let me take a look, or maybe no one actually had that, and I and I was the one actually, okay, so I had a solution. Basically, you can have a stood for each, and let me just make that bigger for you. So if you have, you have a vector, and, uh, First of all, you have an R begin. You can start from the end, which will be our your begin, start from the end, like reverse. You know, to start from the end all the way to the start. And what I can do is basically uh, pass a lambda to this for each. So stood for each is basically a for loop that for each element would invoke this callable object, which is a lambda. Again, it, if you, it's the first time you're seeing a lambda, it might be kind of a strange syntax, but it's just it's just a, a callable object. This is the body, which takes every item that I'm passing and just see out. And uh, these are the parameters, there's a single one. And I don't need to capture anything, so this is empty. The capture syntax is empty, you don't need anything. This would actually print six, five, four, three, two, one. Very, very simple. And again, the, the, uh, the idea is really to uh, have this notion of no row loops. There is something that is being kind of a trend that people want you to use more and more the algorithms of the standard instead of dealing with indices. And, and if you look at the, the solutions, this whole I equals size and then minus minus. And then you need to think about oh, it's, there is no uh, uh, kind of corner cases and all. And just to let you know the the performance of let me go back. Where is it? Okay, here. The performance of this kind of uh, algorithms is like I can put that on Godbolt and you'll see that it's uh, it's gonna be. Uh, the, comparable to the to the regular for loop, maybe even even better some in some cases. Okay, so approaching a problem, think how is there is there already an algorithm out there that I can use, and there are so many of them that you you that I when I started delving into that, I didn't realize there are so many things that I I manually used to manually handcraft it that are already there. Okay, and, and by the way, the reason I was picking the parallel algorithm, as I mentioned at the beginning, is because it it's using it is using a lot of algorithms, and and it's a good kind of a recap on on how how you can use algorithms. So that's what I. Okay, uh, let's uh, let's do. I have four C++ quiz. Let's have one because I there was one hour left for the uh, C++. Uh, parallel algorithms. So I just want to make sure that I have enough time. So it's a tradition where we pick <coughs> a CPAPAS question from CPAPAS quiz, cppquiz.org. Uh, okay, so difficulty is uh, two out of three. And please take a quick look at what out there um, in the in this question and see what you can what do you think is the right answer so so I, I'm just gonna go over it. there's an include of IO stream this is so we can stood see out this is an IO stream 
uh, way to kind of print. And <clears throat> there is a struct X. It has two elements. One is variable one, one variable two. Both of them are type int. But the first one actually has a bit field. It says this one has a bit field, it's three. And what we do here, we're creating an instance of X and we're trying to print the address of each variable. And the question is, uh, so, so is there an output? Uh, is it a compilation error? Is it unspecified or maybe implementation defined? So basically, if you try Clang or, or GCC or, or different ones, uh, it, you, you'll get different uh, behavior. Or it's an undefined. So <clears throat> the, the standard leaves few things, like a lot of things, let's say few things which are undefined. And then the implementation can do whatever it wants. Uh, like it can, everything can happen. It's it's like the implementation is free to do whatever it it wants. Like in some cases, if you, if the implementation sees code and it's and it concludes that this is an undefined uh, behavior uh, per the standard, so it can actually even remove the code altogether. Okay, so so this is what it means. Like in in my words, <laughs> undefined. It's not the official push one if you want just Google for that. Uh, so what people think, let me, so there is a question here. So someone say, I uh, don't trust lead code performance. <laughs> okay. That actually, I, I realized that I don't trust the lead code. And, okay, so let's go to this. Uh, so zero or force or undefined. Anything else? Ad address of bit field. Yeah. So it's so it, so and and when you're saying ad, the address of bit fields are defined. Uh, it's just a guess, but I don't think you can address anything less than a byte. You can. I think I I think you're right. I don't, but I don't know if it's undefined or it's actually compile error. Oh, okay. So so Good I point. don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Like I don't. Good point. It's been it's been a while. So let's try both of them. Okay. Let's mm -hmm. see. Uh, by the way, any anything uh, someone says zero or false. Okay, so let's try. Okay, let's let's try. Uh, I think let's start with compilation then. Okay, so it's actually a compilation error. This is one of the things the compiler, not it's a no, not runtime, but it's a compiler thing. You cannot apply a, an address of operator to a bit field. So this is one of the things that you should remember. Uh, kind of memorize, yeah. Uh, quick question, do you know if that applies if you have a bit field of like 32 bytes or like let's say that the size of your int is 32 uh, bits, sorry, and then you say that this, uh, you specify in the bit field. I well? don't know, but I think what you're asking, let me take a look. You can, you can try that. Well, well, isn't the pointer uh, on a 32-bit uh, instruction set supposed to be, uh, gu is guaranteed to be, uh, well, depends on the compiler, I guess, as well, but isn't it four bytes normally for pointers? Are you asking why? Are you asking why this is not compiled? Well, I'm saying. I think what what he was asking was. Oh, uh, I think I think what it, what Antoine asking is this. Right. It still. It doesn't like it. So even mm -hmm. if you do thirty two T, so yeah, this is a U in thirty two T, and I'm actually taking the address off of everything. It still says, look, you're trying to take the address of a bit field. Don't do this. You can't do this. So, so okay. is is this that, that does it answer? Yeah, that 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 makes sense. And I I think to the point about the pointers. Uh, I think it's more about not being able to address uh, something less than a byte than it is being the pointer of the actual uh, element. Uh, member, I mean. Yeah. Bit fields are fun. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Not using them a lot, but yeah, they they are very useful in in, in a lot of embedded and, and things like that. Okay, so I'm I'm gonna skip the other ones, uh, and we'll continue next time. Just want to make sure that I am not running out of time. But I do want to have my book recommendation, uh, which is C plus plus high performance. This is the second edition. 
And uh, there is a third edition already in the works. This is from uh, January 2018. But even though it was 2018, very recent, talks about a lot of uh, 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 the domain of, of high performance algorithms in C++, how to use the SDL correctly, uh, using stood algorithms and Lambda. And there's also, uh, you can see here, Rangers V3, which allows us to write a more functional programming style. Uh, it's kind of shorter and, and concise and, and, and better syntax than what we have today in, uh, this is in 20. Uh, in 20, we have a Rangers library that is based on Rangers V3 library uh, that was written, is written by Eric uh, Nibbler. Uh, and you can use it in your in your projects if if license looks good and you can you can bring it into your project. It's uh, I think it's it's a C++ 17 library. Anyway, uh, warm really warm uh, recommendation on this on this book. Lots of stuff. Uh, SIMD is another thing that I noticed there. I have the physical book, so I so I I own the book, the book and I I I went through that the book and it's it's very very interesting. It, okay. Yeah. Does it talk about uh, anything like you know uh, polymorphic uh, memory resources, anything of that sort? So PMR. So I can't remember if PMR was one of them. Uh, I just don't remember. But uh, let's see if there is anything in the. If you want things related to the PMR, uh, we had this uh, last time, right? Remember we had this. Uh, uh, oh in, yeah. In July. So, uh, uh, C++ 17, the complete guide by Just Justice. I don't know if I pronounce his name correctly, but uh, let me let me show you. Using it. So this this one, I have a, a the physical copy. It's an excellent oh, okay. book. Excellent book, by the way. Worth any every penny. If you want to. Get a hand. It's, it's pretty expensive. Yeah, it's almost fifty dollars, forty-three bucks. Uh, but it is complete. Like it's really complete. Like everything you can think of that is related to C++ seventeen. Every single thing would be there, and it's written very, very well. And and the C++ our our next topic on the parallel algorithm. I actually took source code. The source code is available of online, even if you don't have the book. So I took I took these source codes and I'm I kind of changed them a bit for the for the meetup, but basically uh, it's based on on the source code that uh, uh, Nikolai Justice uh, uh, published. Hmm. Okay, so uh, and PMR actually it's a really cool thing by the way. If you okay, so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna okay so give me a second. So for for the main course of this evening, I'm gonna have the entire desktop. Um, I'm going to talk about uh, parallel algorithms, and uh, parallel algorithms are a new addition in C++ 17. And for this specific uh, talk, I I I downloaded the. Uh, the source code of uh, uh, of the uh, the code examples for this for for this uh, book that I mentioned again warm uh, uh, like I like I would definitely encourage you to uh, pick it up and I I have here let me take a look I have here uh, my uh, C line um, and it's using WSL twenty 2000, uh, 20, 2004, like uh, this. Hopefully, you, I, I'm sharing my desktop, so hopefully you see everything. Uh, so let's let's start. So uh, so what what are we going to cover? Uh, there is a chrono one utility that I want actually want to talk about for a couple minutes because I really like this this library and, and just want to have a couple minutes uh, 
uh, explaining what, what this utility is, is doing in the source code. We talk about for each, with and without algorithms, uh, what kind of include headers you need, performance benefits, uh, compare and we compare parallel to sequential uh, sorting, parallel sort, uh, execution policies, exceptions, uh, what what, how exceptions are different if you use this parallel algorithms. Uh, the, the, the what what is what is completely new parallel algorithm that didn't have any uh, counterpart in the in before C++ 17. So some of the algorithms are are only parallel. They're not. They don't have both versions of parallel and not parallel. Uh, reduce, accumulate, transform, reduce. If you if you coming from functional programming, this this. Uh, Reduced name and all and, and 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 similar would be kind of familiar. So let's start with uh, uh, the timer HPP. So timer HPP would be here. So this is from Chrono Library. Um, I maybe changed few a few things here and there, but uh, Chrono Library it's a very cool library that I encourage you. If you're using C++ 11 in your day-to-day -day job, you should definitely, and using any element of time, you should definitely use Chrono. It's fast, lots of compile time, uh, lots of the things go, they, they are computed and, and done during compile time, and uh, it would save you a lot of headache in terms of debugging, not mixing, all kinds of uh, units and, and like milliseconds with seconds and things like that. So the idea is that Chrono has a few types of clocks. Steady clock, for example, is a monotonic clock. And monotonic clock means this, this clock would never go back in time. Let's say if I change something. So so think about it, it's 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 a it's a it's ticks since you you booted your machine. And it's never going back. So there are all kinds of clocks. Some of them would would go back, and it can be high resolution timers that goes back if the clock is changing. This one does not. And and in a lot of cases when we want to benchmark something, we we want some something like a steady clock or a monotonic clock. And you can Google for that in CPP reference. And the clocks would have something that calls a time point. And a time point is a point in time since epoch. So every clock has an epoch, like the inception of this of time of this specific clock. It can be something that you invented. If you have your own clock and you can have your own clocks, or or if it's a if it's from January first, nineteen seventy. That's all. Like there's all kinds of epochs, right? So a, a time point is just a time in the uh, the overall life of this clock. And you can have two two time points, and you can subtract, and you can get a duration for, from from subtracting uh, uh, a specific time point with another time point. And this is what basically what we do here. We have we create an, a, a a variable, and we capture now, like how many ticks now, and then we diff. So if if I so in the constructor. I I capture now and when I call print diff, I capture what hap like what is the time point now diff with what was captured in the constructor and I create I print this message I have a duration I have the number and I look at milliseconds in this case and then I capture this uh, the, the, this uh, last as a as an another time point because I'm gonna I'm, I might call print diff multiple times so every time I want to capture the diff uh, this is pretty much straightforward uh, and we'll see how we use it uh, yeah so I talked about all of this stuff okay so before I start your mileage uh, no it's <laughs> YMMV yeah your mileage may vary uh, why? Because just uh, when I start playing with it, I saw a lot of variants, and one machine would show me. I, I tried a couple machines, 
one machine would show me something, the other machine would show me something else. It's a different compiler. So I tried it on two different machines. One is Ubuntu 2004, uh, bare metal Ubuntu 2004 with G++ 10. So if I do G++ minus minus version, I'll, I'll see this uh, uh, output. And I also, for this specific meetup, I wanted to, in order to get uh, uh, these examples compiled and running, I want to show you that in live, uh, I wanted to have a, something on my uh, Windows machine, uh, which has WSL 1, but the, the Ubuntu that I had was 18.04, which had uh, uh, GCC 7. GCC 7 doesn't have uh, the parallel algorithms uh, implemented yet, and I, I needed something more recent. And fortunately, in Microsoft App Store, there was uh, an Ubuntu 2004 that I could install. And I installed that, and it, it, it lives side by side with Ubuntu 1804. So this is really pretty cool. And, and Sea Lion can work with these uh, environments almost seamlessly you just you just tell C line look I want to I want to work with this tool chain which is 2004 and I have instructions at the end of this slide deck uh, with it makes my life very easy when I'm working with C line and C line is uh, where is it oh, here. Uh, so so if you look at the setting and I'm a big fan of C line if you look at the build execution, there are two chains and I have multiple of them. I have Sigwin, I have WSL, WSL 2004. And uh, in, in my, in my uh, uh, configuration, I'm marking WSL 2004 as my, uh, uh, the one that I actually want to use. And under the hood, it does all the things for me in terms of SSH and things. There's, some things that you need to do, it takes five minutes to set it up. I have instructions, so don't worry. But just remember that the fact that we have parallel execution function doesn't mean that everything, you start migrating your, your, your std algorithm, let's say std accumulate or std for each, to a parallel, and you just gain, I don't know, something. It might even, you might lose in performance, not gain. So it's really important for you to measure, measure, measure. And uh, in my project in, in, in Qualcomm, we measure as much as we can. Um, so I encourage you to do the, the same. Uh, uh, there is a very, it's a very important to measure. Uh, not everything that, so I, I've, been, I've been doing a lot of things that common sense says that this like a would be faster than b and i'll try it out and i'll see that my assumptions were completely incorrect uh it, it happens a lot by the way <laughs> that i as, assume something and it would be incorrect and i i i really and compiler compiler explorer is one way uh there are, ben, there are benchmarks online that you can have there are benchmarks tools that you can have locally so please have that done in before you actually make a conclusion okay so your mileage might vary hopefully i made that point clear oh one of the things that i needed to do not wasn't wasn't hard is to install tbb uh and i i, I actually completely forgot that gcc is actually working with uh intel tbb so intel tbb if you just google for that where is my if you just Intel TPB would be the threading building blocks. It's an open source library and there is a, it should be a GitHub for that. And uh, I don't know if this, if this, if it's this one, this is one TPB, but I can't remember. I actually have it in my, as a start. Uh, but anyway, just, just Google for that. And uh, it's it's a it's an open source library that GCC is, is under the hood is actually using, and it's a it's a very nice library. I played with it before, and I completely forgot that GCC is actually using. And what happens is I try to compile it for, for preparing 
on the weekend, I prepared this session. And it just I had include issues, so I needed to uh, install this library. It's basically it's an APT install on the uh, WSL Ubuntu 20.04. So and I, and I have instructions at the, at the end of the slide text. So, OK, so let's talk about for each. So uh, no, not this one. I need yeah, for each end. OK, so. There is, uh, and it's a very good kind of a recap for for beginners. Uh, this is kind of targeting all kinds of uh, uh, expertise levels in C++. So this is a very simple uh, for loop that was just taking the index, calling to string, which is a C++ 17 function, and it, it just uh, takes this zero, one, two, three, and makes it a string and push it back. Uh, there's, a lot, there's a lot of uh, uh, all kinds of clunk tidy errors, which I didn't fix in the original source code that, again, you can download that freely, even if you don't own the book. Uh, some of them I fixed, some of them I don't. This one says, look, you're actually doing pushback multiple times in the loop. Uh, why don't you just pre-allocate the capacity so you don't need to reallocate your uh, uh, your vector underlying memory every so often because what happened is there is it's going to start with one and then two and four and eight sixteen this is usually the the what you see in many compilers uh, they might have a different factor uh, to grow but it it usually it's two x and similar uh, so so there's a, a useful clunk tidy here just. I, I didn't fix that in this in this specific file. And there is a for each n. This is, if I'm not mistaken, for each underscore n is a new one. It's because 17 takes begin and how many like how many elements. And for each of them, it, take, it takes the element by reference, non-const reference. So I actually can change the, the elements. So uh, what happened here is that I'm uh, changing the elements, and then I'm printing the, the first 10 elements. So the first five elements I'm changing, just taking the element value plus L. So I'll see values 0, value 1, value 2. And then I'm printing this, the, the 10 elements. And so I'm going to pick for each end. I'm going to play it. Yeah. This is the parallel one, which I didn't want to. I actually wanted this one. Very straightforward. A recap uh, on using for each and a lambda. Again, this is the syntax of the lambda. Nothing to capture. This is the argument of the lambda, and this is the body. Okay, good. Very simple. Nothing special. Here. Now let's take a look at parallel for each. So there is a parallel for each that CPP. Let's take a look at that one. I'm going to take a look if there is any question. No, okay, okay. So parallel for each. Let's go back to the C lion. This one. Okay. So parallel for each has a specific, and I, I made some changes. It, it wasn't a const expert. If I'm not mistaken, I changed that to const expert. And um, I, I, we have, we have, 1,000 elements. By the way, you can do this as well. This is a C++ 11 that you can have a, a, a separator. And, uh, but we can actually, uh, uh, okay, so in this case, we don't have anything from the command line. So, <clears throat> sorry. Um, so 1,000 elements, we have a data structure that has two doubles and a vector of this data structure. So it's used to define. So take a look at the syntax. This is a new syntax where I can have a uh, an initialization of value and square root uh, by having this empty uh, curly braces. This is going to be a value initialization, which is a zero, which is a default initialization to zero. And uh, this is, uh, makes my life easier. I don't need to have a constructor. I'm reserving the number of elements. 
to 1000 and then pushing data this is this is the original code had something similar I, I don't think i changed that and what i'm doing here is i'm now it's the first time i'm introducing this uh, parallel uh, algorithm so it's an overload so if you go back to cpp reference and take a look at the at the, at the functions there is going to be an overload the first argument to the function uh, would have uh, the execution policy. There are a few of them. There are three in C++ 17, and I think they added another one in 20. And we'll focus about on the main one, which is parallel, sequential, and and uh, and another one, which we'll talk in in a second. Uh, so uh, so it's so using the parallel algorithm is as easy as uh, using the overload passing the parallel algorithm with the range and what I want to do for each, in this case I'm using for each, I'm just computing something and uh, and basically that's it. And, uh, sorry, and uh, basically that's that's about it. So if I, if I just, there is nothing fancy here. Uh, this is not what I want. This is the parallel for each. And basically that there is there is nothing here. And and we could this is this is the original code, nothing, nothing uh, uh, fancy here. Uh, we'll see more in a second. Uh, by the way, I just want to make uh, a comment that CMake is super simple. Uh, the only thing I would need to do was uh, the TBB one. I needed to link with TBB. How I how I figured it out, I tried to compile it and it, after I after I brought the TBB library into the, the uh, uh, 2004 uh, uh, WSL, uh, the compile went fine. Nothing of the include were missing, uh, but uh, because I had a, the include path, uh, but the but the linker I forgot that actually this is not a, a compile on uh, sorry a, a header only library. There is a, there is a library that you need to link with. So I just did find package. It's, it's not a sim. It's not going to be a CMake uh, talk. So I'm not going to talk about how what does it mean to find component, but it's pretty simple. I added this TBB. The include comes for free, and the link comes for free, and everything is is done. Uh, okay. Let's uh, let's uh, move to a higher gear. Measure, measure, measure. Again, this. I, I realized that uh, different machines would have different uh, uh, behavior and different compilers would have different behavior. So, so please measure, measure, measure. Uh, everyone would have a different breakpoint. It depends. Maybe maybe on on a on a on a machine, which I, I definitely want to try on a machine that has like multiple cores, not like two or four, uh, like a powerful machine, and see where the breaking point. So. Let's let's take a look at the parallel uh, parallel for each loop uh, five. Okay, so so uh, some boilerplate code would be showing up in almost every file. Uh, we start with a uh, one thousand elements. Uh, the first argument, if any, would be uh, how many how many uh, elements instead of one thousand we can change it, uh, and then. <clears throat> what we do, we we populate uh, the data, and then f five times. Why this is this was the original code. Uh, I left it as is. We're gonna uh, initialize the timer. Uh, use for each the sequential uh, uh, execution policy, and sequential means roughly. I'll explain what does it mean roughly. It's as if I'm using for each overload without the execution policy. Okay, so it's 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 just sequential. And then I'm going to have the parallel one. And I'm going to print the diff of both. Okay, so first of all, let me just make sure that it's compiled to the latest one. And I'm going to just use the the command line up uh, to uh, to show you. Hopefully you see this. Okay. And uh, the parallel for each loop. So 
by default, thousand elements. So let's take a look what what happens here. So there are five iterations, and I I, I learn a lot by just by by writing this uh, the slides and and trying it out. So the first iteration, the sequential was point zero zero forty eight millisecond, and then there were four milliseconds for the parallel. So right off the bat, one thousand elements, the parallel just sucks. It just sucks. The, and, and just remember, TBB is doing everything for us. So, so, so TBB would need to spawn the, the threads, start distributing the work to the workers, and, and kill the thread. So there is a lot of overhead. The question is, where is the breaking point? Where is the overhead worth us to kind of go into this uh, uh, parallel algorithms? So 1,000, not really a good thing. So let's... Let's try, uh, let's say maybe 10,000. Oh, one of the things that I wanted to show, this you, this is common. The subsequent runs would be, and this is caching of of the process or things like that. There's lots of stuff. This is this is the, some some caching happening. Probably multiple reasons for that. So we'll see that it is consistent throughout the entire talk. You'll see that the if I have five iterations, the second and beyond would be much faster, uh, at least in the parallel. Uh, um, I think what happened here, kind of, uh, and, and it's an open discussion, by the way, you can chime in and, and talk uh, and speak up. Uh, the TBB library would not probably would not kill the walker, so the penalty is is maybe on the first one, but they'll the walkers would still be alive waiting for for uh, uh, walk to be submitted and distributed to the walkers, and so so instead of like some like I don't know thousand x or or more, it's gonna be like ten x slower or or something along those lines. Uh, does does it make sense? So is it caching or is it uh, because the thread creation is it's, faster? Yeah, once it is it's, yeah, it's TBB probably. It's TBB, uh, right? Yeah, it's, it's TBB. Thread creation, right? Yeah, okay. there are a few things. One, like I don't know how much cash in. I don't know how much caching we have. I'm kind of, kind of trying to think. We are not really caching. I mean, uh, for the second time when you're running, it's not really caching, right? Yeah, because we compute. I don't know. I don't remember. Yeah, Actually, we don't. Like, I, we don't compute. It's the same vector. Uh, maybe, maybe some of it in in a small elements. Maybe some of it is is maybe still in the L three. So I don't know. Like it 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 requires a lot of. Uh, maybe you're getting some false sharing as well on that because like you're writing a lot of elements. I'm not sure how many. Of the, oh, yes, now yes. You're ten. We'll talk about false. We'll talk. We have. I have one one thing that I. Uh, try it out as false sharing, and we can have a discussion. Hopefully, we'll have time for that. But this is interesting. I actually found it very interesting to kind of uh, first time I'm dealing with because it, at my day job, I'm actually not dealing with uh, parallel algorithms. Uh, so this is one hundred thousand. Uh, still not not great. Uh, at least not in the first one. Uh, here there is some. Better performance also here. So we're already seeing something better. Let's see 10,000. 10,000 is not, not great. How about, uh, so this is this is 1 million. So it looks better in the subsequent. So there is a penalty at the beginning, but the other ones start being better and better. Uh, the question is, I always had a question that, for the so, first iteration, can I can I make but, it better? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So the, it a, matters, right? We won't be running benchmarking on the, yeah, like. Yeah, so it's not a benchmark. The first iteration always matters. Yeah. Yeah, the the, the first I, I always wanted to see the first one. Yeah, I agree, and um and again this is this is if you if you read uh, Nicola's uh, book he has the same he has the same disclaimer and the same. Look, I'm try I tried this and this, and then on my machine, which is a this and this laptop with I I my laptop is a Core i5 8th gen. 
So here's the same kind of disclaimer. So, okay, so this is this is 10 million. Okay. I have a. I'm I'm a bit confused with uh what what's the five uh runs are are those? Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, sorry. Sure, sorry. I I'll explain it again. So uh, maybe I. Each, uh, no, no, that's fine. That's fine. For so for each for each loop. So we do five of these. We we run an iteration over the entire vector. How many elements we pass as an argument to the program? Okay, and the default is one thousand. Right. So we run it sequential. So we'll take the first index and they'll, we'll do square root and assign it to this value. Go to the next one, do a square root and assign it. Right. And then when we're done with this range, we do the same thing with the same range, but we passing a different, this is the new thing in Cipara 17. This oh. is a, an execu execution policy. Right. And then we print the diff. Oh, okay. And I we see. do it five, five, five times. What I'm hmm. saying is that when we when we first spawn the process, and TBB says, "Oh, I have something to do," they'll be they'll spawn threads, worker threads, and probably we can check it. By the way, uh, uh, these threads would would still be alive, waiting for uh, uh, walk before they they'll. They they have this tear down. Probably if I, people would probably do that as if it, like the implementation would do that probably. Right. Hmm. I was I was wondering which uh, which one of those parallel threads is the is the uh, I guess you call it like the master thread. Which which one controls the other ones like when they uh, when they're reclaimed. Okay. So so this for each tells uh, uh, tells the the uh, the algorithm I want that sequential so it's it most likely most likely but it I, I don't really know I'm just kind of guessing it it's gonna be on the same thread might not by the way I'm not I don't think I don't think they I don't know if the standard says it, this for each sequential needs to be on this on the on the on the color thread might be in a different context. Maybe I don't know, uh, but this one, the next one, would definitely be on uh, multiple threads. So, so, and and how it's distributed, uh, this is up to TBB to to figure it out. I don't know. And and are, I, is, is it truly parallel, or is there some contention among these threads? I'm guessing it's the you know it's the former where it's actually parallel. There, it's parallel. And we'll talk about all kinds of kind of uh, defined prints, but it is parallel. Other contention, other race, all of that. This is something that we'll, we'll touch. Hopefully, we'll have time. We have twenty minutes, but we'll we'll we'll, we'll see. Uh, oh. But but for me as a user, I I have two things that I need to do. One is making sure that my algo my my code would not have issues when it goes and and being sent to multiple workers mm -hmm. i or just part and uh i need to make sure that uh uh yeah so so basically that's one of, one of the probably the most important things oh yeah there's another thing that i don't want, i don't want to talk about right now let's talk about when, when we reach that there's this, this sequence of operations in in some cases so 10 million is already making a, a, a big diff even on the first uh, 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 loop. Okay. Uh, so 10 million. Uh, how about count if? Let's do count if. It's a simpler one. Count if. So So here, I actually took and made a lot of changes to the uh, to the uh, actual uh, file that Nicola had in in his uh, in the zip that he uh, distributed, and I tried to see if there is a false sharing. Uh, I don't think I have time to go through that the 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 line versus not the line. What I try to do is what if I put so there is there is this array of, of integers 
what if I I space this apart as the max line T, which is can be a, a, a cache line. So uh, how do I do this? I actually had this uh, uh, this test function that would uh, would be past the the container, and the container might be with with aligned or non-aligned, and uh, let me see what I want to explain more. Okay, so let's let's give it a try. Okay, and uh, we start with okay. Let's just, just make sure that it's compiled. If you if you if you can just uh, mute yourself if you if you're not speaking, that would be uh, nice. Thanks. Okay, so count if. So default is 1000. So let's take a look. Not aligned. Uh, so this is the first one. And again, what we do here is we're just counting some elements with a sequential versus parallel. OK, count if is a, is the standard. And just you give it a, a, a range and a lambda, and it's going to uh, count how many times the lambda returns true. Let's say you want to count how many seven you have in a in a in a, uh, a vector of integers so uh so you can do something with county something similar with county here, here is it's something okay what is even okay uh so we populate we populate the the the, uh, uh, the vector here and and we run it sequential and non-sequential like power so okay so not aligned uh we get this as the first one, and it's not going to fair, be fair for the line because the TBP is already up and running. But anyway, uh, the sequential and parallel, you can see that uh, this the uh, parallel is is slower. With the line, I didn't see anything special here. And trying to go into, let's say, this is one million. 1 million uh, parallel is still not that good. Uh, here it's a bit better uh, with the aligned one. Also, same deal. I didn't see. This is something that I just wanted to kind of convince myself whether aligned data would make a difference. Okay, 10 million. 10 million start to be interesting. Even the first one would be better. Uh, and the subsequent would be even better, and the line one would also be better. So 10 million <laughs> on my machine, 10 million is the is the one that makes sense to start with, uh, at least for the first iteration. Uh, uh, you can you can ask questions like, what if what if I prime TBB before I call? I don't know about that. Uh, I don't know if you can do it through the standard library. I don't believe so. I don't. I don't remember seeing something that you can prime, so I don't know. Uh, so, uh, but it's a. It's a. If you ask me yourself, I have the same question. I don't. I don't really know. Yeah, there was a question. Some someone had a question. Uh, yeah, quick question. Uh, why did you choose the max align T um, for the? Oh, I think it's one twenty eight. But I, you know, this is from my memory. And, okay. I, I mean, on my implementation, it might be 128. It's, uh, I, it's implementation defined. Uh -huh. uh, I don't know. Uh, I mean, uh, the, the choice of, of uh, this, like, why did you choose to align it? To this uh, because just, uh, just a, I, I was reading about, OK, so first of all, the destructive, I couldn't make it to work. This is this, these two are the, the ones I let. let Here's the thing. I don't want to go into that because it's going to take me 10 minutes at least to explain. Okay. And we don't have that. We have 15 minutes. I want to at least go go over most of the uh, presentation. And then you can you can take a look at the rest. Um, but yeah, you can you can pick something else and play with it. So I, I'll I'll have the code <coughs> somehow distributed. You can take a look. It's 90 95 percent of it is anyway the the one from. You can download yourself and and play with it. Okay, so. Find if is is more kind of benign, and we still see we still see the this ten million at least on my machine. Okay, uh, parallel sort. Let's say let's see what happens with parallel sort. Uh, 
about it. So it would be this one. So what what uh, uh, Nikolai uh, had in his source uh, in a very in a very natural. This is the boilerplate code that I mentioned. It's the first argument. Just, just remember that's nothing. And I print how many elements, <clears throat> and then he has this. He wanted to create this uh, all kinds of uh, of elements in the in the uh, in the vector of strings. So there's a vector. so he has this ID and then two string of of the index and then ID of the uh, of the index and then so on. so because he wanted to have the ID lowercase and ID uppercase kind of mixed and then he wanted to sort it and he did he used three execution policy. Actually, one of them was the default one, uh, the overload, not, not using even sequential. One of them was the parallel, and one of them was the parallel and sequence, and we'll talk about that in, in later slides. And then what he, so this is just trying to sort this. So you, you basically would have ID lowercase first, and then ID uppercase after the after that, so there's a there's a lot of to, a lot to sort, and you'll see that it's pretty heavy. And then he said, okay, what if I have a lambda that is uh, is going to take a substring of of uh, of this? Let let me let me sort it without looking at the ID string. I'm going to skip to look only at the number. And then I sort it by the number. Is it going to be faster than looking at ID lowercase uppercase? And the last thing that he had is, you know, this substring. If you look at the at the CPP reference, substring is actually returning stood string uh, by. It's a copy actually. So 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 we we actually making more. We actually having more work. What if what if I actually using string view? So string view is a great thing for you to use if you uh, if you want to skip all these uh, uh, temporaries that might be uh, created. For example, a substring is one of them. So so we have three three things, and we'll we'll do it five times. One is uh, uh, sorting uh, sequential parallel and parallel unsequenced, and then we'll look at sequential and parallel only five times. One with a lambda that just skipped the ID, and then with, with improved lambda. So let me first make sure that the parallel sort is compiled. And uh, I'm going to go back here. So the, the default is 1,000 elements, so sequential is pretty fast. Uh, parallel is faster, and parallel and sequential is uh, also kind of fast. Uh, I'll talk about parallel and sequential in, in a second. And with lambda, things are getting better. Even for the sequential one, it's uh, it might be it might be better. Let me take a look. Uh, actually, in this case, in 1,000 elements, it's not a big deal. Let's try with one. Let's say one billion. So the improved lambda that using uh, string view, which doesn't do any allocation, just take a look at the view and tells the sort what is bigger, which element is bigger is the faster parallel is definitely making an impact here when you do sort uh, uh, in in all the in all the elements probably so so this is this is, was one million uh, I think one hundred thousand was kind of uh, let me see uh, parallel is also making making a good a good re having a good results with that so uh, sort is is basically uh, getting us uh, a very good uh, uh, results. The, the algorithm to sort in parallel manner uh, works pretty well. 
So they, they, they could they could make a very good job in in using TBB in in, in parallel the 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 operation of, of uh, sorting. Uh, there was one thing that I wanted to make a note. Let me think about it, and I kind of forgot. Okay, we'll talk about unsequencing in a second. Okay, so one of the things that I realized is that there there would be this question about is unsequence and sequence uh, the overloads uh, are they the same? So if I have for each which doesn't have the, the execution policy as a parameter, and I have a for each with the execution and it's a sequential sequential one. Is it the same? And it's not necessarily the same. And this is something that I learned from just reading from uh, uh, Nikolai's book and, and on the web. Uh, it might be different. So the, this, the, even if you have a sequential uh, one, it might not give you the same results as the as the overload without a sequential in terms of performance and and I think even if I'm not mistaken, this is like now for my memory, we need to kind of double check that even it's not go might not be uh, in some cases not for, for each is it it's 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 a simple case but some cases not might not give you the same results. That I can't really remember which which algorithms they have. That. Just just bear that in mind that it's not necessarily the same. This is kind of a this, this is kind of a disclaimer and and just a, a gotcha. Okay, let's talk. Let's I I mentioned the sequential parallel and and parallel and sequence. Let's let's talk about it. Just give give a, a some some uh, more data. Sequential is no parallel no parallel algorithm. It's you, the thread is executing one element at a time, so most likely you'll have the same value values with sequential and non-sequential. But uh, make sure that you just read read your your compiler documentation well. Uh, oh yeah, the return times might be different. Yeah, it might need forward iterators in this if you pass a sequential versus the one that you don't have execution policy. So they just read read the documentation in order to understand. It's just very convenient to have the overload because if you have a runtime decision, if I want to go sequential or parallel, so you want the overload. It's more convenient though you can you can fall back with some tricks to the non overload. Parallel is multi threaded might sequentially execute the operator operations on the elements. The, the idea behind parallel, and it's important to understand the parallel and sequence, is that parallel means that once I'm, let's say I'm a thread and I'm taking, I'm picking up a, an element, I'm going to be done with this element before I'm going to the next element. Okay? So I'm not, if, the, if there is an element that I need to do few few steps, I'm not going to uh, do some of the steps go to a different element, do some of the steps and go back to my, to the other element and continue. Parallel means I started something, some element, I'm going to be done with this element. But it, and it's done, but it's done in parallel, like multiple threads is doing the same thing. Like they, they're dealing with different elements. Uh, here's, if you go to CPP reference, there are lots of gotchas that you need to understand <clears throat> that, take a look at this one. There is a, a data race. What do you think the data race is? Like, take a look at that. It 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 is tricky, but think about the pushback. What happens here if you do it in in multiple threads? Think about allocation. The pushback is not thread safe. It's not. There's no mutex or anything like this. Think about it. What if you need two two threads are doing pushback? And it needs to be reallocated. Like it's gonna happen, like for sure. Like this is gonna be, like it's it's a it's a very simple data race. So the key the key that the kind of the takeaway from that is that you need to make sure that your your algorithm usage is safe, and you don't have mutation happening while you do it, and it's this mutation would would result in a in a error uh, or data race error. Does it make sense? Make sure that no one is actually asking questions. Okay. Yeah, it makes so, sense. 
so what if, what if you reserve the vector up front so there is no other uh, you know reallocations or co and copying elements back and forth or, or you know I, I believe I believe this one I need to think I'm kind of kind of saying that just just be without thinking too much about the other consequences but uh, I think oh wait wait a sec uh, it might be an issue as well because think about it you. What, what is what is pushback? Pushback looks at the end and push it and and push it to the next element. But what can I do? Pushback from two different threads at the same time without sequencing them. I don't think so. Maybe I maybe I, I don't think I'm wrong, but maybe I'm wrong. There's always a chance. Uh, no, I don't think you can do it. Well, it that does it make sense? Because because there is a shared data in the pushback. There is something that tells the, the vector this is the last element. When you push back, this is the new last element. You must sequence that if you have multiple threads to a push back. Yeah, maybe it'd be overwritten. Yeah. Yeah, it's 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 this one is pretty tricky actually. Right. I haven't thought I didn't I didn't think through like if I need to do this push back on multiple threads, how to do it. Uh, <laughs> maybe 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 I need to have uh, mutex, but this is like it's contention. How can, I, can the question is? Can you parallel this? I don't. I, I now that I'm thinking about it, I don't know if you, if you can easily parallel this, like pushing back in parallel. I don't know. Uh, it depends if you want to maintain the ordering of the original vector or not. If you don't, then you can uh, potentially. But you need a mutex. And, yeah. And, you, and by mutex, you actually start doing serialization of the of the uh, of the access to to v. Mutex or atomic, I mean, some yes, yes. nonetheless. Yes. But, yeah. but, but my, my point is, does it worth it? I don't know. All right. We need to measure. That's what I'm saying. Okay, parallel and sequence. This, unfortunately, this, this and, and I, I don't remember by, when I was reading uh, Nikolai's uh, chapter, doesn't say a lot of parallel and sequence, but I looked online. This is mostly for SIMD. Uh, 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 um, this multiple uh, uh, single instruction, multiple uh, data. Basically, uh, this is one of the things that people use it. I, I didn't have a chance to look at examples, but the, the interesting point here you need to understand is parallel and sequence mean that a, a specific thread can start a specific element that, and, and this element needs to have few steps. And without completing the entire element, element uh, the entire element, it can go back to a different one, different element, continue, start with this element and go back. So, so it might jump between elements even before it completes the operation on a specific element. So you need really need with with parallel and sequence, you really need to have uh, uh, well thought out uh, the the way you actually pass your lambda or your your elements and so on and so forth. I don't have an example. Um, if you if you want if you want to continue this discussion later, we can we can do that. Let's talk about exception handling. We don't have a lot of time, but I just do want to make a note about uh, what was the name of the parallel exception. OK, so parallel exception. Let's compile it. Parallel exception, where is it? Okay, here it is. So one thing that I didn't know that, uh, if you have a Lambda and you're throwing something from this Lambda, there is a different behavior if you are doing something with a uh, uh, algorithm, a, a parallel algorithm versus, uh, so a parallel algorithm versus non-parallel algorithm. And, there, and, and here's what I'm doing. I'm lazy. I'm getting the from end. I'm getting reg if it's a regular. I'm doing this. I'm just running a regular account. If otherwise, I'm running the parallel and I'm throwing. So I have after a hundred elements, I'm throwing. Okay, and I have a try catch. So the rule is the following. So you know that if I throw, I can. If I do try, I can. I can catch. In a non-parallel execution, if you throw, you can catch. In a parallel execution, even if it's a sequential, doesn't matter. 
as two terminate that would be invoked. So let's do this. I have a regular equal just to sorry I so regular. So regular is fine. I have an exception. I cut the exception. And uh, actually, I didn't do, do I print? Oh, yeah, I uh, I just uh, just the, the what is regular. And I try to do the same with the sequential. Try to do the same thing. So the sequential actually didn't. So I do print the the, uh, the sequential, but I actually uh, terminate is being called. So uh, this is why I, I I didn't realize that. Just by reading Nikolai uh, chapter, I realized that there is a different behavior. So keep this in mind. Okay, so uh, let me see. We are at eight. I have few more things to have. I I can go on if you if you need to ditch it. That's fine. I'm not gonna be. Just want to make sure that I go through that. It's probably another ten minutes. Um, so let's take a look at the accumulate. So accumulate is what we call in functional programming reduce. So accumulate would be this. So uh, okay, accumulate. So in accumulate, what I do is I print the sum. I do this accumulate. There's a vector of one element, thousand element. What is this? One million and I think 10 million. Okay, so I have all of this and I'm just accumulating the values. So this is what I, this is what I see. Okay, and it's, I think it's pretty consistent. It's about 0.11 seconds. Okay. So uh, let me take a look. Let's take a look at accumulate too. I think this is oh yeah, this slide I just want to make sure I, I go through this. So, so this slide just uh, talk about I kind of um, uh, skipped it. Uh, so some of the parallel algorithm they when they went to a parallel algorithm, they changed the name. So accumulate is actually reduce and transform reduce. So there is no accumulate overload with a parallel algorithm. Instead, they had a new algorithm named reduce, and this one has these overloads. And, and there is a list in CPP reference. You can take a look at that. OK, so file accumulate uh, is the one that I want to show you, and I did it this time, and it's 0.11 seconds. And let's take a look at parallel reduce. So remember, reduce is the accumulate version, uh, is the parallel version of the accumulate. OK, so parallel reduce. Parallel reduce would be this one. So instead of std accumulate, I do std uh, reduce. And I do, I'm, I'm passing parallel. So it's the same, same exact thing. OK, let's go and uh, let's be, compile that. Parallel reduce here. Okay, let's time it. So this actually a bit better. Uh, not always, actually. Yeah, your mile edge might vary. So I, it doesn't. It doesn't always. Actually, it's mostly worse than than the accumulate. It is much better. At least. All the way to what was that? It was 10 million, right? No. No, it's actually more. So uh, it's actually 10 million. So what? I don't know why it's printing. Uh, so this is oh, this is accumulate. I'm looking at uh, so accumulate is is 10 million. Okay, so. Uh, I don't know why it sounds like the action now, now that I'm looking, it looks like it's oh, it's, it is fine. It is the same. OK, it's 10 million and then. Uh, let's accumulate. Yeah, OK, so. It's a bit faster. 
I don't know. It depends on my machine. You can see that accumulate is not. You can beat it at least with these values, maybe maybe more than that. OK, uh, now it's the last the last part of this presentation. We we'll talk about be careful about parallel execution with a non commutative operations. And uh, let's take a look at parallel reduced flow that CPP. Parallel reduce flow that CPP. OK, so again, boilerplate code just to get uh, uh, the whole uh, vector uh, uh, populated. And then we do accumulate here. And uh, and reduce. Now, what we do here, reduce, we just accumulate things. So, OK, so you can see it is equal in the print of the number in C out. OK, so, so already, uh, so parallel, what was it? Parallel reduce flow. So you can see that accumulate and reduce are basically equal. But, uh, sorry, they are equal here, but they, are, they looked equal here, but they are actually different. And why they are different? They are different because reduce is doing something different. Uh, and, and there is a reason why we pick float. Because float, summing two float number, numbers uh, in the different order would give you different results. So what, what we have here, I have this, uh, again, it's a hack. I'm going to uh, increase the precision. Uh, so if you look at the code, uh, if if I have this n precision, I set the precision to be 20, and uh, and you can see that it, it really differs. If even though it looks because I, I increased the the the, uh, uh, the uh, precision, and and you can definitely see that the floats are not the same. So takeaway from this is make sure that your uh, so even though this reduce and accumulate should be the same. They are not always the same. It really depends on the operation in floats. Summing in order and summing them out of order is not the same thing. And it also depends on how many elements. So the way TBB is doing it uh, and how it's being spawned by the standard, uh, standard uh, library also depends on the number of elements. So first of all, one thing, Make sure that you understand that when you go parallel, things will be out of order. You need to make sure that your operation can deal with it and you'll get the same results. This is like a very important takeaway. Um, and uh, yeah, so accumulate might in my different machine might be different things. Uh, so remember, plus is for float, not necessarily commutative. Uh, there is another there is another uh, uh, thing that I wanted to show. And this will be the last thing uh, accumulate two. Let me just remove everything. Accumulate two. So accumulate two has uh, just a simple accumulate when it's doing square sum and square sum takes the diff the previous sum so far and then takes the element and uh, 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 times it. OK, so val times val. So accumulate two would give me these values. So if I accumulate uh, one, it would give me 30. If I give it 1,000, it give me. So this is what this is. This is the boilerplate code that we kind of uh, uh, push it. So everything looks good. Everything looks good. Uh, nothing special here. It's just accumulate. It's sequential. All good. The next one would be parallel reduce two. So remember, accumulate the the counterpart in the parallel world would be reduce. So let's take a look at parallel reduce two. Again, boilerplate code. Nothing special. Same lambda. And the reduce uh, is the one that we pass the parallel execution. Uh, the range and the lambda, and let's see what happens. This one actually was a very uh, interesting thing, because on my one machine that I tried, it was fine. 
In, on Nikolai's machine, he was saying in this book that it was giving him different results. But on my machine, on one machine, it was it was fine. But on this machine, actually, it's not. And I'm gonna gonna jump to uh, to explaining why. And this is the reason. Um, and uh, you need to understand that some some operations, for example, plus is is fine to parallel. If you do plus of all the elements, you can you can do this. And this is coming from this uh, blog. It's a de definitely something that if you want to read about the differences between accumulated versus reduce, why what is different? And and the, and and the, the the takeaway from this uh, article says, oh, you 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 had an accumulate in your code and you and you change it to reduce just to get some gain. And suddenly your code stop working is because reduce is not going to give you the same as accumulate in some cases. So in this case, it's fine. But what if we do, we do stood minus? If you if you look at if you look at this uh, uh, if you look at this uh, specific uh, uh, diagrams, it would give you a different a different one. And going back, uh, we don't have time to kind of look at it but if you think about paralleling parallel execution of of this lambda think about it the, the square sum is basically taking the previous sum and does and it does plus of the current element so how do you how do you parallel this right it's pretty it's pretty uh, maybe even impossible because the what is the, the previous sum needs to be computed so so this is an issue and Fear not, there is a solution for that. And the solution would be kind of splitting that into two different operations. And the parallel transform reduce is the one. Parallel transform reduce. So what do you do? You first take all the elements and um, and you and you basically uh, uh, do val times val, and then you plus everything. So you so the the technique that Nikolai is, is saying is that in these cases try to break it into two different uh, operations and transform reduces a new algorithm, and it has the following. Uh, in this case, this is the overload with the parallel execution. It has the range. Remember, reduce is basically taking multiple elements and will end up with a single one. So we need an initial value. So this is the initial value. And then it has two, two lambda, or two operations. One operation is the transform and one operation is the reduce. So what is the transform? The transform is taking an element and transforming that to a different element. In a functional programming, it's a map. So we take val and we, we get val times val. So we do it for every single thing and then once we have everything transformed into val times val, we do plus. And we know that plus is a commutative operation. So parallel transform reduce is prestige. OK, and uh, let's do time here just to see. Uh, and let's time accumulate two. I think accumulate two was the one, if I'm not mistaken, but I it might be. I don't, remember, I don't remember if it was accumulate or accumulate two. I don't remember, but I don't have time right now. So, but basically, I just want to make sure that this point is clear. Here's the transform reduce. It's the range, or you have you have the the execution policy before in it. Then the fold. This is the reduce part and the map. Uh, the last last thing, it's really another 30 seconds. There is another example of computing directory size. Let's say you have, this is using the file system library from uh, CPP 17. It's a very simple, let's say I have uh, I have a path, I'm, pa I'm passing a path and I want to compute all the, the size of all the files, okay? So uh, this is another example. I'm not gonna go through that. Uh, it's already uh, 15 minutes past. Eight. So this is the same idea. What we want to do is first 
go through all the files and compute the size. Then we have all the size of everything and we can plus it. OK. Uh, that's about it. And uh, you can we can take a look at the slides later about what's the uh, the implication if you don't do it in in a in a in a two phase step. Um, lots of lots of lots of instructions how to uh, install WSL and C line and TBB and all of that would be here. That's it. Uh, thank you for sticking around. Sixteen people, brave brave sixteen people. Uh, any any question? Sorry, it was the last few uh, 15 minutes were kind of fast, like just too much. Yeah, I, I was wondering, uh, is this, uh, I, I'm assuming this is recorded, right? This is recorded, yeah. Uh, will, will, where will the recording be uploaded? YouTube channel, YouTube channel. Yes. Okay. When we've been fortunate to have a, an approval to get to do that. So, so I'm uploading that and, and yeah, you have it. It's just my time. I need to find time just to kind of uh, upload it and uh, uh, I don't know, trim it if needed uh, on the on the edges. <laughs> and I, 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 I'm not editing it nicely. Uh, so it was just one big chunk. It's on my to-do list kind of uh, edit as needed, but but it's fine. Takeaways. Uh, TBB and GCC 9 and, and parallel algorithm is nice. Is it mature? Is it uh, production grade and all of that? It's up to you to measure. Uh, and I, I'm kind of afraid that you'll need to continue measure as you change your tool chain and your maybe target and, and things like that. It's, it's a very complex problem to deal with. And you need to make sure that you pick the right thing uh, in order to uh, get them. And and the way I kind of sense from the committee, from the committee and and uh, other tool chains out there like Nvidia and other tool chains that they provide all kinds of uh, means to parallel parallel with with GPU kind of seamlessly. This would be another thing that you need to consider. Uh, if if your environment allows that, like if you have GPU, then uh, Nvidia has some compilers uh, that they start uh, shipping uh, outside to customers, and I don't know if TBB would continue to be the one that's being used. So just 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 keep an eye on this. There's gonna be a lot of changes probably in the future, and kind of refining and making it uh, better. Any other questions? OK. Thank you for uh, sticking around and, and joining me. And have a good evening and a good rest of your week. Thanks, Kobe. Thank you. Thank you, Kobe. Thank you.